When we think of arcade races, we mostly associate the genre with go-karts, bright lights, and thrashing against the clock outside a bowling alley or cinema. Easy to pick up and play, and to hell with the realism. But once series was a little bit different. After Liverpool-based Raising Hell Software renamed themselves Bizarre Creations, they developed Formula 1 for the PlayStation in 1996 and 1997 for Cynosis, aka Sony Studios Liverpool, who were both based in the same city and a license that Cynosis themselves would carry up to 2006, along with the Wipeout series. Meanwhile, Sega was so impressed by Bizarre Creations F1 games, they made a deal with them to develop an exclusive racing title for the Dreamcast, which was Metropolis Street Racer. The level of detail in the cities, the real-time day and night cycle, and its unique Kudo system made it a must-play for the system. However, it felt like a waste because despite the positive reception, it was released worldwide by January 2001, just a couple of months before the Dreamcast discontinued, and it wasn't even released released in Japan, setting it up to fail. On the opposite end of the scale, Microsoft just unveiled the Xbox to the world, and Bizarre Creation saw an opportunity to make new games for this new system. But Microsoft wanted Metropolis Street Racer, and since Sega technically owned the rights to the name, a spiritual successor was the only option. Project Gotham Racing was released as a launch title for the Xbox on November 15, 2001. The same year MSR came out in North America. Think of it as that, but on a different console and using another the name with a few gameplay tweaks. Okay, I wouldn't be surprised if DC's lawyers had a word with Bizarre Creations about this. The developers must be huge superhero fans. I don't know if I played Project Gotham Racing when it was new. It looks like something I should have tried at least once. But again, I didn't have an Xbox growing up and I only knew a few people who had one. But it's cheap and it received high praise back when it was new. Even the front cover looks awesome. There's something about Xbox and Ferrari F50 going together perfectly, although I will be using the 360 for this review. The first thing I noticed when playing it on this console is how much free space I've got here. It exceeds what the game is expecting, plus 50,000. Like getting an error on a weight scale. And who are these people? I ask this because they serve no purpose in any plot, and nor are they fictional drivers. Just curious is all. Anyway, the objective of Project Gotham Racing is to complete all the challenges by winning races and earning kudos in four different cities, which is basically a fancy name for points. At least it matches with the dictionary meaning. To earn kudos, you perform power slides, overtake, gain air, drive on two wheels, etc. Basically flamboyant driving. And the more different moves you perform simultaneously, the bigger the combo, which can break if you either hit a barrier or cone. Oh, but at least you don't lose kudos like the predecessor. Sometimes the main goal of these challenges is about reaching the target number of kudos as opposed to just winning standard races. Although the quick races are the latter, this kudo system overshadows the gameplay as you reach further. In the street races, for example, first place doesn't guarantee a gold medal, or even in the time-based challenges, if you reach your intended target, you might not earn enough kudos to earn a medal at all. You need to make sure you do enough colorful driving as well. It's not perfect. It's hard to tell how much kudos works best for certain medals, and that can be frustrating sometimes. But at least you'll be kept busy with over a dozen different events. And it helps keep the game addictive for a while. Even though all you do at the end of the day is drive as fast as possible. And they're as difficult as you want them to be. That is, until you reach halfway up the kudos challenge ladder with the lap count increasing and drivers becoming faster. But I'll get to that. Each hour played unlocks a new helmet, and earning medals and reaching kudos milestones unlock new cars, ranging from hot hatches to sport, muscle, super, and hyper cars. The showroom count is 29. Not the biggest in the world, Metropolis Street Racer had more, and nor are they customizable, but at least they're all licensed with almost every fancy car brand available apart from Lamborghini. And each one has a different feel despite being an arcade game. It most likely relates to the drivetrain because some cars refuse to slide. Just drive as fast as possible without thinking about the kudos. That usually helps.
but whenever you're driving, it's going to be a blast because the controls are almost perfect. It's such an easy game to play and the physics are very simple, but even the slightest elevation and barrier nudge can make a difference. It's hard to comprehend the handling at first, especially after playing Forza Motorsport recently. I thought it would be a mix between arcade and simulator, but it's pure arcade racing without the flashiness of the Need for Speed games. It's like driving on a go-kart track or an old tarmac rallycross circuit with its small jumps and thin roads. And I mean really thin. They'll catch you off guard. Gotham City is nowhere to be seen, which is disappointing, but you do get downtown Tokyo, London, New York, and San Francisco. The latter is the hardest because of the elevation. New York City is the only new city in Project Gotham Racing, whereas the others appear to Metropolis Street Racer, and they look incredibly similar. Makes sense. The game was a commercial failure because of the Dreamcast. Bringing in a spiritual successor on a new console on launch day provides a wider demographic. And the most obvious reason, the street layouts are exactly the same as real life in 2001. There could have been a few purpose-made circuits thrown in there, like the Nürburgring appearing in the sequel, but setting it in cities create an almost never-ending playground, and that's why there are literally hundreds of different tracks in this game. Of course it risks making the game feel repetitive seeing the same city for a long time, but that's the worst thing you could say about PGR. And when you do beat the game, there's even a free roam option, giving you a clear idea of how much city landscape you can put into one game. Okay, this feels like 28 days later. The cities are so deserted, you wonder why there are multiple radio stations active. Who's gonna listen to it? This is how the soundtrack operates, similar to Grand Theft Auto, which allows for multiple genres to be categorized and implement real DJs. This is only subjective, but I'm not a big fan. But hey, at least like most Xbox games, you can import your own custom soundtrack. So there's a consolation if you need it. Honestly, I don't notice the radio because I have it turned off for YouTube reasons. It's actually the slowdown that gathers my attention. Okay, disclaimer. It's only an issue when playing it on the Xbox 360, but around 50% of the time, it's painful to witness. It's hard to calculate how fast to go around a corner, and it makes the game really boring as a consequence, especially when driving through Times Square and the center of Tokyo. I could literally count the milliseconds faster than this game at its worst. I wish you could see the current time running in hundreds of milliseconds like that, because that would illustrate my point perfectly. That does not look like I'm going 100 miles an hour. Hour. So if you have an original Xbox, I recommend playing this game on that instead. At least it doesn't stop me from winning. I will say this, it looks really sharp on the 360. Maybe even better than Forza Motorsport because there's no widescreen so it doesn't feel as stretched. And it runs in 60HZ even in the PAL region. So you can get 60 frames per second on the 360 when it chooses to run smoothly. You can see the driver steering, changing gear, and the cities have multiple weather options that are an obstacle in itself, especially the fog. It set a perfect example graphically when the Xbox came out. It's a simple presentation, yet high quality as well. These opponents won't take prisoner. It's almost like they don't recognize you on the track, but they do. They just won't show mercy, even towards each other. But that's because they can, and so can you. Sometimes you're gonna have to drive dirty, especially if hitting them doesn't cancel a kudos combo and car damage is only cosmetic. Just don't get complacent because it slowly becomes harder as you climb the challenge ladder, and you'll find yourself barely earning bronze medals. It has a well-balanced difficulty curve. Also, you can't just select an F50 or a Carrera GT and sweep the competition on the smaller stages because the game is programmed so that you're always gonna race cars that are evenly balanced performance-wise. So theoretically, you can almost beat this whole game using one car, which I think is a good idea. Though after doing some of the very hard events with the Mini Cooper S, I found it easier than driving anything faster. Longer, but easier. Which is weird when saying it out loud. Driving the slowest car increases my chances of winning these challenges. However, it's easier to earn kudos with faster cars. And where's the fun in driving the same car the whole time?
Inevitably, some events will put you in your place, like you'll need a few attempts. But I was hardly frustrated because that's how good the controls are. It's one of the big examples of being able to pick it up for the first time and play easily, but hard to master, especially if you want those gold medals. Imagine playing this with the big Xbox controller in 2001, the Duke. This is a launch title after all, but learn quickly because it's harder than it looks. I say just get Project Gotham Racing instead of Metropolis Street Racer. It's cheaper and also backwards compatible with the 360, although I do recommend playing it on the original console. And you can make the argument that the Forza Horizon series might not have existed if not for PGR. That's a good thing with racing games without any serious flash. It distracts you less from the driving, and you can't truly complete it until you reach 100%. Straightforward as it sounds, some might find it generic, but trust me, Project Gotham Racing has aged very well. It's an easy recommendation, and word is that the sequels are even better, so I'm excited.